Hello again, everybody. Scott Casper, Takedown Media, very special guest, returns to Takedown this week. He goes into the Nike hot seat, the former Iowa Hawkeye, now MMA star around the world, Paul Bradley. Paul, the gentleman, Bradley joins us. Paulie, how are you? Good. How are you doing? Good, man. You're live from sunny San Diego. Is it sunny there today? Uh, It's really sunny, actually. Uh, Had a little bit of uh, rain, cold weather, the... uh, past month i mean we've needed it obviously with uh all the uh drought talk and all that but uh now it's really sunny today it's actually 71 it's clear sky and man not a cloud in sight so it's pretty awesome you have since you've moved out there really settled into your fight career paul you've got so many great victories you you truly do uh 23 big wins seven losses only uh one what the six decisions and i think that's important too outline six decisions of those seven losses they could have gone either way and i think judges in those particular towns had something to do with some of those but nonetheless at five foot nine and 170 pounds you've accepted a big fight to fight against alexander shlomenko in uh in russia in moscow talk about it yeah you know uh when it was presented to me you know i really had to think about it and uh i'm not gonna lie i'm getting paid pretty pretty well for this it's more than i've ever been paid it definitely uh, made me think twice about it. And, and, you know, once I started analyzing Alexander and what he does well and what he doesn't do well, I think I match up very well with him. With that being said, he's not a huge 185-pounder. You know, he's a decent size, probably walks around maybe 200, 195. But, but uh, I think I match up really well. And if we've looked at his past fights, he has struggled with wrestlers, uh, mainly, you know, Brandon Hasley and uh, Tito Ortiz. So, um I'm looking forward to this fight, man. I'm going to go into the Lions Den, kind of like, I mean, it doesn't get any more Rocky Four than this one, you know? Didn't Gable always used to say, good news is you're wrestling today. Bad news is you got the Russian. Bad news for the Russian yeah. is he's got the American, Paul Bradley. Yeah, exactly. You know, uh, it's going to, it's, uh, man, it's going to be awesome. Um, you know, I'm sure I'll get a lot of booze. Obviously, I'm fighting fighting one of their, you know, one of their best fighters in Russia right now and and uh, fighting in actually the Olympic, uh, the Olympic Stadium in Moscow that they built when they hosted the Olympics. So, you know, it's I'm expecting a huge crowd. I'm ex- expecting a lot of booze. But with that being said, that that's not going to deter me. It's not like I've never been in enemy territory before, whether it be, you know, fighting Chris Honeycutt in Fresno or fighting Dante Rivera in Atlantic City. I just think, you know, it's going to be to a much bigger degree. But, man, these are the type of fights I get up for, and, man, I'm, I'm, I'm excited, you know. You don't want to go back a couple of fights, Bellator, MMA, Bellator 129 to be exact. Um, Josh Neer took this fight with you thinking that you would be an easy fight. And uh, three rounds, five minutes each, you absolutely owned Josh Neer. Uh, I don't know if he's developed any respect for you since, but prior to that fight there was no respect. How do you handle that as a fighter? You know, he's just the same fighter. He goes into bang, stand and bang. Uh, you know, he hasn't really developed his wrestling higher than the high school level. And, and uh, you know, I'll go back, you know, even in high school when I wrestled him at the, you know, Mick Pickford Invitational. I'm sure you know that tournament down in Fort Madison. <laughs> sure. You know, I, I, I wrestled my first match, and I'm actually like, why? you know, I only beat him six to nothing. I'm kind of thinking, why am I not beating the crap out of this kid? And, it's because he was over overall tough, but you know, then you know we fight a couple years later, and those were some of the easiest takedowns I've hit against you know non wrestlers. So, um, like I said, with that being said, you know he hasn't, you know, there's not a lot of head movement. There's not a lot of you know um, mystery be- behind what he's going to do. He's just going to come and stand in the pocket and try to trade. So. Um, like I said, you know, all the respect to Josh, but I mean, with this game, you got, you, you have to evolve. So there is that fight or a series of fights. The two that you had with Chris Honeycutt, the first one ended accidental clash of heads. Uh, can you describe that incident? Yeah. You know, uh, just two wrestlers coming in to throw bombs. You know, I was coming in and throw a hard right hand and, uh, he was coming in to shoot and he just got under my head a little bit and, you know, popped me right and top the noggin. So, you know, I didn't think the cut was that bad. 
uh, you know, but as we know, um, Connecticut, they're, they're, they're very, you know, they, they, they're they, conservative. Uh, yeah, they're on the side of caution as far as it comes to cuts. So, uh, you know, they felt it was best that we stopped the fight. And, you know, thankfully we got to redo the whole thing, uh, you know, in his hometown, you know, in Fresno. And I got to, I got to demolish him. In front you of all his demolished him, dude. 40 seconds worth of punches and Beltran ends it. I mean, that was a beautiful fight. That was one that made the Hawkeyes in the state of Iowa stand up and go, you know, that Paul Bradley's still fighting for us. Yeah, you know, and Chris talked a lot of crap. You know, he, he's he's actually a punk, man. He, he he hasn't learned anything from that fight. You know, all his interviews, I didn't learn anything. Well, you're stupid. Then you're not get you're not evolving. You know, when I got stopped by Luke Rockhold, I learned more about myself than I've ever learned. You know, and you know, poor poor dude. Like you know, it's like he went to special ed college or something because he's over there talking about having better accomplishments than me in college wrestling. It, you know, but as far as I'm concerned, we're both two-time All-Americans. I, if I was a runner-up, I'd still be an All-American. I wouldn't be bragging about that as he was, you know. And as people know, you wrestle at Iowa, you're their national champ or an All-American. But, you know, he's sitting here counting the placings <laughs> down the podium. I'm like, man, come on, man. Like, if you're not the national champ at Iowa, you're, you're just an All-American. So with that being said, you know, it was nice to just go in there and, and, and shut him up. But. Like I said, that that didn't last long, you know. I, I don't know who's feet, who's feeding them all all this yes men talk over there, but whatever, you know. So is what it is, right? Yeah, exactly. If, you, if it if it doesn't uh, enter your sphere of ability to change, might as well move on. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Paul Bradley, exactly. Uh, sixteen and ten in his senior year, two thousand five, two thousand six, while at the University of Illinois. Excuse me, the University of Iowa. Can't believe I said that. But uh, thirty four team points in dual matches. Uh, that that's that's saying you put some work in. Um, yeah. You know, the, the, being a part of that, uh, and you know who you know why I said Illinois. I was thinking of Pete Friedel. And uh, oh, yeah. that great competition you guys had at the NWCA All-Star Classic that year, you got the Team Coaches Appreciation Award. And, um, you know, you're, you're one of those guys that you and I have been friends for a long time, and there's, one, there's a reason why. You've always given your heart to your sport, and you haven't walked far away from it. As a matter of fact, in San Diego, you've got the Ultimate Warrior Wrestling Club. You started with 28, 29 kids. You're up to 62 kids, and you're still giving back to your sport. Can you talk about your love for the sport of wrestling? Yeah, you know, when I, uh, about the, I believe it was the third year I was out here, um, second or third year, uh, I was approached by by a group of people, uh, four people, two of them being coaches, two of them being parents, about uh, starting a wrestling club in the community, you know, um, there, there was one down here called the Chula Vista Badgers, which it's been huge for 30 some odd years. And, you know, it's pretty much rain, you know, every, every kid in, in the uh, Chula Vista East Lake area went to it. But that being said, they weren't being properly coached. It was basically the parents running the practices and, you know, they actually saw, you know, I, I was helping uh, a little bit over there at, at the high school once in a while, you know, and they kind of saw the opportunity to bring someone like me and, to that community and realize, well, Hey man, you got a two time all American right here that could definitely start a club and make a difference. So, you no, know, uh, like that, with that being said, you know, first year was like 28, 29 next, next year was like 38, 40. And finally this year I capped off at 62. So I'm definitely happy with the progress. You know, I got some killers. I had a state champ last year. Uh, I had a, um, kid who took third and another kid who who should have made the podium but you know as kids we we know how that is like once you lose a match it's hard to bounce back and he lost in the blood round so unfortunately we didn't get three placers uh but this year i'm looking to put five uh, five or six on the podium so it's it's been good man i've 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 been in enjoying it for sure our guest is paul the gentleman bradley and uh, he's uh, one of the stars of mixed martial arts fighting around the world and i've got to go back to your camp because there's a distinction in camps uh, a good camp experience and a bad camp experience bad camp experience will take your money 
and teach you a few things. Good camp experience comes with a whole lot of integrity and five things that you want in a wrestling camp. Can you name a few of the five things that you want when looking for a wrestling camp? Yeah, you definitely want to take a look at the clinicians um, and uh, you want to do your research on them. You know, even that's the thing. Some of the, the best wrestlers in the world aren't the best clinicians and aren't the best coaches. With that being said, uh, we've had guys like uh, Kerry Collat come out, who, who's amazing. Um, we've had, you know, we had Nico Megalutis last year. We had uh, Logan Steber. So, um, you want to look at price as well. Uh, is it, you know, in the budget, a lot of these camps try to charge you five, 600 bucks. We don't do that at ultimate warrior wrestling camps. We, we charge very little, you know, like I think we top off about two ninety for a five day camp really can't beat that, especially with the names we're bringing in. As I mentioned, Colot, uh, Steber, uh, Megalutis, uh, Mark Perry, Isaiah Martinez, you know, just to name a few. Uh, affordability location. Uh, we put ours in the desert out now, Centro, uh, a lot of them just because, uh, it's kind of, it's right in between Arizona and Southern California. So, uh, with that being said, we get a lot of kids from Yuma, uh, Phoenix, uh, a little bit more North, the Palm desert area, LA. Uh, and you know, uh, also you gotta, gotta take a look at like, uh, you know, uh, like the, uh, I guess like, uh, numbers and stuff like how, how many kids came the first year and stuff like our first camp, our first year, we did 110, uh, last year, I think we topped off about 80. Uh, but overall it's, it's basically the biggest thing is coming to a camp is, uh, I was always taught you want to walk away with at least three techniques you can use three. That's all. You know, and you may learn 110, 115 techniques, but take away three and the camp has been a success for you. So take away three. So top level technique. What about live wrestling? Where does that how does that play into uh, the world class uh, wrestling camps that Ultimate Warrior offers? Yeah, you know, so we usually wrestle them at the end of the day Uh, for our big camps. We'll do a takedown tournament, which which is pretty cool. It's first to five. Uh, Basically, we offer you know, singlets, it's pretty good. We get some pretty good matches. Uh, a lot of kids fighting for those singlets. Uh, but yeah, uh, we, tr- we try to put it at the end of the day. Uh, by that time, they're already so tired. The technique is probably, you know, starting to wither away as far as paying attention. So, you know, you get them live wrestling. That's got to open up their eyes again, get them back awake. And we usually end that end the day with that and live situations and like i said we run a takedown tournament the last two to three days depending on how big the camp is kids really get after it to try to get those singlets so you uh there's always a smile on your face face as soon as we start talking wrestling man and it's a it's a good thing do you you remember let's go back a number of years you're still at iowa and the thing I noticed about you is you always went in with your forehead first and you always busted open your forehead stopping a match and what did i tell you remember what i said to you I said, uh, wrap your head. Wrap your head first before you start the yeah, match. Yeah. That, <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. I, and unfortunately, you know, that has, you know, I, that's followed me into uh, MMA, you know, fighting. Uh, you know, I think uh, a lot of those judges' decisions that you were talking about, a lot of them have been swayed by. I, I just cut super easy. You do. It's, it's like that crow magnum forehead and my eyebrows and like caveman style or something. But. <laughs> You know, I think in particular my last fight, you know, super close fight. Uh, I just think, you know, I got cut on two headbutts and one elbow uh, on both eyes. So I just don't think it sucks because, like, there's nothing I can do about it. But I think, you know, and it doesn't bother me at all. That's the thing. You know, some people, they get cut, man. They freak out. Uh, obviously, I've dealt with it for so long. It's like it's almost like a wake-up call once I first – I see that first blood. So, yeah, uh, in college, I was always known for that stupid headband. He, uh, headband. So, I don't know who's lost more play. blood. I don't. I, w- I would put you up there as far as a, as a, as a cutter. I would put you up there with Ric Flair, Dusty mm-hmm. Rhodes, Randy Lewis, yep. and John Reeder. Uh, yep. Those are some of my favorite guys. I mean, you guys get cut so easy, but man, yep. you make the fight look good. Paul, let's get in the website for the Warrior Camps. 
Yeah, it's uh, my, my camp uh, website is ultimatewarriorcamps.com. Come check it out. Great coaching, man. Uh, we run amazing wrestling camps. So uh, we haven't decided where we're going to run this one yet for sure. It's kind of looking like maybe Yuma, Arizona again. Uh, good location. Um, but, yeah, I, like I said, we bring in the, we've been bringing the best clinicians. Kerry Collot was amazing. Mega Lutus, uh, Logan Stieber. Uh, next year we're looking at uh, 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 why am I drawing a blank? Have, have you have you had Roger Kish there? Uh, yeah, I have actually. I had Roger. I had Manny Rivera. Uh, Great guy. Uh, we're looking into next year bringing in Taylor from PSU, um, and then I feel like there's one more I'm missing, but uh, Tomasello as well. We we brought him in, so we bring in we bring in the best of the best, you know, and. You know, we don't make a ton of money. I'm not going to lie. Uh, so, I mean, we, we'd rather have the, the camp lower, make less money, uh, but have great clinicians. So And great kids. You've got great kids yeah. coming, and they get the benefit. Yeah. And that's what we call growing the sport. He is Paul, the gentleman, Bradley. He's got a big fight coming up. It'll take place March 3rd at the Olympic Sports Complex in Moscow. Alexander Slomenko is waiting in the weeds over there for the young man from uh, Iowa, from the U.S. star, Paul Bradley. 23-7 and seven for Bradley on his record. Slomenko looks like he's fighting almost every week somewhere, 54-9. and nine. You guys are only about just a little under a year apart in age. So yep. it's on paper, I like the matchup a lot, Paul, and I really like the fact that you're coming in, or going in anyway, to the lion's den, as it were, to represent the United States of America. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Like I said, I've never fought outside the U.S., and I get to fight a Russian in Moscow. I mean, it doesn't get any more Rocky-ish than that. So, <laughs> Paul, are you going to be at the NCAAs with me in St. Louis this March? I'd like to. I'd like to. It's starting to match up pretty well with my fight schedule. You know, uh, years past, I, I haven't been able to, but it's starting to match up real well. So I'm thinking I might – make that trip to st louis so. that'd be awesome we get your training over at uh, tyron wedley's gym and oh, yeah. to get you some time in there we'll get you on stage at the ncaa fan fest show and our uh wrestlers turn mma stars uh big stage presentation there'll be a lot of fun some autographs some pictures and the whole bit paul it's always good to talk to you man thanks for taking the time to join us today yeah yeah and thanking my sponsors dynamic fastener uh, Sticky No More and WTC Wide Format, my good friend John Lazar, man. Appreciate you guys. Special guest of the Nike Hot Seat, one of my favorite guys. Former Iowa Hawkeye. I guess always an Iowa Hawkeye, right? Always, always. Go Black on. And gold. All right, very good. Paul Bradley has been our guest in the Nike Hot Seat today. I'm Scott Casper. Thanks for watching. <laughs>